Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this month's greenhouse chat. We have moved from porch chat to greenhouse chat. Yeah. Yeah. Due to the uh, rain, which you might be able to hear, and the pollen. I have not currently washed the front porch yet, so it is quite covered in pollen. So we're going to be in the greenhouse today. Of course, these videos are where we kind of give you updates on things that are happening here at the nursery life and then of course we answer some of your questions that you have asked throughout the whole month so here we are here we are it's here april it's april selling lots of plants and selling lots of plants we have been taking this time today i've been working in the greenhouse production greenhouse kind of organizing and getting things because you know for online shipping it's it can get a little hectic when you're starting to pull plants. So every once in a while you gotta go in there and get, keep things organized. So that's what I've been doing. And yeah, lots been, of lots of color. Lots in the of background. beautiful color. Yeah. I know. It's um it is definitely go time. We've talked about this in the last, you know, video that we did with the nursery tour, but it is go time. Our average last frost date here um, in Dallas, North Carolina is April the fifteenth. And that's, you know, I don't know, a week or so away, less than a week away. And looking at the extended forecast, our lows are like in the 50s. So we should be good to go. I am planting like we are good to go. And if you are interested in coming to the garden center and you have specific plants that you're looking for, then you need to come sooner rather than later because we're starting to come into the effect of where we're selling out of some of the most popular plants. And then of course we're growing, obviously, but then even, you know, the supply from proven winters on certain plants is starting to run a little low. It is, yes. So that's that's the beautiful thing and the complicated thing about being a grower is that we can grow what we want, but we can only grow what we can get from proven winters. Yeah, just I mean we were as far as space in the greenhouse kind of got to a point where we were pretty tight mm -hmm. um we're starting to create space now we just this morning we we ordered some new liners uh, for the online store so there will be some popular ones coming back in stock online so you, you know watch for that in the next coming days um but you know everything behind us in the far you know that's that's retail at the nursery for folks to come and shop yeah so it's here you know right. lots of inventory um that's one thing that, that you know businesses that have a retail spot and an, and an online store you know struggle with is folks going to the website and thinking well, bubble gums out of stock well not not here it's not you know no and that is something that we need to work on better educating you our viewers yeah. and our customers that if you are going to come to the garden center i would just say don't even look at the website for inventory because that's online sales so really the e-commerce the online sales versus the garden center they are completely two different inventories um, so that works both ways so if you're coming to the garden center the best way to know what we have or get an idea of what we have is to watch our weekly nursery tours not that we can show you every plant, but um, just come out, right? And then if you're coming out to the garden center and you see a certain shrub online, especially the shrubs and, and things, and you go, well, I want this Incredible in a quart size. Well, we can't do that because it's two separate inventories. We just can't run up here and grab it because it may already be sold to um, Susan in New Hampshire. And Susan with New Hampshire is going to be very upset with Jenny in North Carolina because she sold her plant to somebody that came to visit. So we can't pull from the online store at the garden center. Just their two separate inventories. Just keep that in mind. Yep. I think that sounds good. All right, anything looking forward while I pull up questions? Anything that we need to think about, talk about? Uh, when is this video going out? Uh, uh, sometime this week. Yeah. Well, I know I'm I looking forward to Saturday. Saturday's going to be a big day at the nursery with Greg from Power Planners coming to see us. Yes. For the workshop, and that's going to be a good time with him. Yes. So depending on when this video runs, I can't keep the, the schedule straight. Yeah. So this Saturday, uh, the... April the 13th, Greg from Power Planner, the owner, is going to be here doing a free workshop. So come on 
and come see him and see us and shop and I know we just launched the um, Jenny's edition pink auger, the heavy yeah. duty yeah. auger, the pink one's back on for Mother's Day. Yes. So yeah, if you're so interested in the pink auger, you can have yeah, it for it's Mother's up to Day. That point for Mother's Day and then it's off again. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we kind of already talked a little bit about this, but the first question, we'll just kind of revisit it just real, real quickly. Uh -huh. This came from X Ramirez. She says, um, hello, do you have the Jazzberry in stock? So she, right, we do. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you mean online or retail. And that's one online that I was able to get this morning. So it shows that a stock online right now for shipping to the home, but it will be back in stock shortly. And there will be a limited number of them. So, yeah. Right. So if, you, if you're interested in a plant that is sold out online, you can go to that plant and on that plant's page, it'll say notify me when available. Yeah click on that so that way when jerry restocks it you'll get an email that says hey you know yeah. super tuna vista jazzberry is now back in stock so then you can reorder it right right but just know that everybody else that did that is also going to get that email so if you want it you need to move with purpose yeah right okay so we're just going to jump around a little bit all over the place with the questions that y'all had um these are just ones that i picked because either they were asked a lot or I just thought they were very interesting. So the first one, second one, I guess, comes from um, Julia. She says, hello, Jenny. Um, at 2125 in the video minute mark, do you know if there is a yellow clematis from Proven Winners? Wouldn't that be gorgeous? This upcoming weekend sounds like it's gonna be a huge success. Sorry I'll miss it. Have a blessed day. Well, Julia, guess what? There is a yellow clematis from Proven Winners. It is new this year, right? I think it's the called Funny Tello. Um, I, I'm probably going to butcher that, but it, this is really cute. Um, maybe a little bit different than what you think of as a clematis as far as the bloom. It's more of a big bell shaped and they turn down, but really cute. In fact, and I'm pretty sure that this year you don't have to probably wait till next year. Oh, really? It's spring that have had a crop loss. So. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I was just getting ready to say I need to pull one for myself. Yeah. No? no. Oh, darn. Okay, well, Julia, you and I both have to wait maybe another year. But just know that there will be a yellow clematis yeah, in our near future. Yeah, that's the craziest thing, you know. Everybody thinks, you know, that you're growing bubble gum and, you know, we pre-ordered bubble gum and it still has to grow. And it still, it still has to oh, yeah. do its thing in the greenhouse. And there are things that happen and you have unforeseeable crop losses. Right. So it, was, it's a normal thing. It is a normal thing. Right. And I, I was just telling Jerry this, that y'all know that I like to order the uh, anemone uh, corms and the ranunculus corms. And I got a notification from Eden Brothers where I order mine. I had placed the order in the fall, just got the email a couple of weeks ago, and there was a crop issue with them. So I didn't get all those corms that I you know, had paid right. for, and of course they, you know, refunded me, but um, just know it, that is common. This is a living thing. It's not like a t-shirt or something. It's a living thing and there are unforese it's unforeseeable, not accidents, but just yeah. issues. All right, um, Aero SV, SWV says, um, going to the power planters, I saw that you had two DeWalt drills with Greg can you post which ones you use? Also, do you need an attachment to your drill to use the larger augers? So a couple of things. Um, you did see us using two drills. They're the exact same drill. One was just newer, one was just older. Um, so this is the exact same drill. It's a 60 volt. 60 volt. Um, but it has the e-clutch. But if you're curious as to about which power planter products that we use, they're all on our website. So if you go to our website, and go to power planners, everything that you see there are those exact things that we use. Um, so that kind of eliminates, you know, questions about that. I did see somebody ask, do you have to use DeWalt drills with the augers? No, it's just what we use and what Greg likes to use. Yeah, and I think in that particular one, as far as a lot of cordless drills that are out there, there's only certain companies that really make a good 60 volt drill with an e-clutch and DeWalt it just happens to be one of those gotcha and it's it's a really really good and two I know from like a personal standpoint Jerry has a lot of DeWalt power tools right. and the batteries are all interchangeable, interchangeable and 
they have lots of cool power equipment now you know you can get blowers and you know chainsaws and hedge trimmers and just different things so you can you know it's not it's an investment because the batteries mm -hmm. are expensive they're the most expensive part yeah. of the whole thing yeah so and you know you do not need an attachment no, for your no drill attachment. It's the ready only, to go. The, yeah the only other thing i would say is people have asked about the handle and you know how do you get the handle the handle came with the drill. Comes with the drill. You just you know put it in the position that you want it. Yeah, because there's there's holes on all three sides yeah. of the drill, so you can decide where you want it to go. Um, when we were in, when I was in the berm and I was planting uh, various, I was replacing plants that had died over the winter. Um, one of those was the new silver lining artemisia, the right. gorgeous artemisia, and so. Um, Deanne says, isn't that Artemisia going to take over your flower bed anyway? They all do here. I tried several, but they're all a total pain. Rip them all out. Well, this is the beautiful thing about this Artemisia is it's not like all the other Artemisias out there. So as I was talking about in the video, um, other Artemisias, when they spread, they root and they go out and they root. So when you try, and they can be very aggressive in their uh, habit. And the silver bullet would probably be that way. Silver bullet is that way, which is yeah. what we sell as an annual. Silver lining, however, does not do that. It only has roots at the crown, what you actually plant. And yes, it does spread out. I think it's like two feet that it spreads. But as it spreads, there's no roots that come down. So it is not a bully plant whatsoever. And then for me, it was like November after hard, hard freezes, maybe in December, I just literally gathered all that foliage up and cut it like a ponytail and just cut it, gave it a flat top and it was super easy. So that's the beautiful thing about the silver lining. Very different than other Artemisias. Yeah, both of those are sold out. Just to show you the popularity of that plant. It is an awesome plant. Yeah. That silver lining. Both retail and online. At online. Yeah. It is gorgeous. And it came back for me starting in February. And it's this beautiful, tight silver mound. Oh, gorgeous. All right, now this one's for Jerry. Ooh. He'll understand why when I say when I read the question. This is from Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl says, um, do you ship to California? Yes, we ship to California. <laughs> No problem. I know I, the question is, is that you know, California is the strictest state in the union as far as getting plants to there. Yes. Um, we have shipped a lot of plants with only one hiccup with uh, a certain county. The way I understand it is, this is the way the inspector that I spoke to described California to me. It, it is 58 different states within the state, which means there's 58 different governors that choose how they go about enforcing their regulations and laws at the UPS center. And the governors being the plant inspectors. Governors, yeah, or like the town or the county okay. uh, manager or whoever it may be, okay. elected officials. I don't know, right. she and I was just chit-chatting. She was a lovely person and everything was great. And um, But our, yeah. yeah, so we did have one order get flagged from her. Yeah. Um, everything was fine. We had all the credentials yeah. we needed and everything. Yeah. So. That's um, why you, folks will ask that question quite often, do you ship to California? Because they know it's it's hard to do so. We're shipping annuals and perennials as a greenhouse crop right. with a soil that's from Canada. <laughs> you know, so it's, 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 we avoid a lot of issues right. with soil-borne insects. Yes. You know, but otherwise, if we do have crops, they go, then they're treated before they leave here. Le leave so here. That's, and we have all those regulations and letters from certifications the certifications and all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Yes. You name it, we got it. Yeah, he, my, my guy was like, yeah, they had no right to hold that box. So, you know, but it's California. They do what they want. Yeah. Um, the next one, th now this is <laughs> Mary Claire and Alyssa, who are our, our shipping gurus customer service gurus. So if you have a customer service or if you call in or an email, it's going to be Mary Claire and Alyssa who answer you. So be nice to them, please. Please be sweet to them. There's grace in gardening and there's grace in, in business as well. Um, but this is probably the number one question that they are getting right now. 
is from Vicki. Um, she says, do you know when the pre-orders for Zone 8A are going out? The site says April 1st. Yeah, so they're, they're finishing up 8A today. So by the time you see this video, 8A is over with unless it's an order that was placed today from 8A. Right. You know, so they are, hour. it is just running just a wee bit behind from what the website, I mean, just a wee bit, completely normal. Yeah. I will say, I was asking Mary Claire today, um, I said, what do you think is your biggest zone that you got the most orders from? And she said, definitely zone eight. And then zone seven was a close one behind. So as far as like, that's where we got the bulk of our orders from, but they are working. Trust me, y'all, they are working their little honeys off and um, we say, you know, accuracy over how fast you get it out. And there's going to be some mistakes every once in a while. Just contact us, go through the whole procedures. You have a little note card. But early on though, early on, we, we sent emails through the system that yep. was let, lets everybody know. So what we're, I think we're going to do now, it's, it's better to over communicate and kind of come up with a more regular weekly or bi-weekly email. Just says, okay, we're finished up 8A today, except for folks that just happen place to order. just place your order, moving on to 8B. So everyone has, because the the more customer service, because custom, here, customer service is also pooling boxing plants. So the more time they take to answer questions like that and delays the process. Right, so I think we can streamline yeah. all of that. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, user, a bunch of letters, a bunch of numbers. Would you consider selling the hens and chicks and Michael Carr strawberry pot on your online shop? So that's a yes and no answer. Mm -hmm. So the yes, and, the yes part is the hen and chicks. We definitely talked about that. I don't know this year if we can do it based on the inventory, like if we can get the inventory because they sell out really early. They sell early down here. Well, I mean, yeah, where we get the, the nursery we uh, get them from yeah. sells they out. They seem to have done better. I think they've expanded a little bit. Yeah. So we definitely will be able to do that. Um, it will be based on their availability. So hopefully we'll be able to do that because that'll be a super easy thing to add to the online store. Now the no is the Michael Carr strawberry slash succulent planters. Due to their their size, because they're pretty awkward to pack. That and then they're cool, fragile. Man. I mean, they are, it is pottery and it's fragile. Um, so we're just gonna say no. <laughs> Yeah, we're not, we're not ready for that. And, and we're just not ready for that. And I mean, flat out honest answer, like they're already almost sold out at the nursery. Like, so at the garden center, they're already gone. So it's um, a lot easier just to let somebody drive up and we sell it and pick it up. And the last thing I'd want to do is, you know, try to ship it to you and it gets to you and it's broken in either two pieces or 200 <laughs> pieces. Yeah. Because that would not be good for either one of us. No. It's not something we can get just like that. We place those orders yeah, what, six, nine months until, in advance. We won't get it until next, yeah, yeah, till next season. Um, Debbie asks, do you carry the heart-to-heart -heart caladiums? So that's gonna be another yes and no question, answer on that one. Um, yes, we will have them here at the garden center, but no, we will not have them available online. Yeah, we haven't really talked about that one. It's not a hard one to ship. I mean, it's no, it's not a hard one to ship, but it, the, it would be hard to know exactly what varieties we would have available. That's true. Because, as you know, we, um, I potted up the caladium corms that we're going to be using here in the garden center and the signature garden. So the folks at Proven Winners, um, I was able to choose two caladiums that I wanted to go in the garden. They sent me the corms and I, you know, potted up and I'm sprouting them. They're just now starting to show <laughs> new growth and everything. So they are quite challenging to grow for us because we don't have a greenhouse dedicated just to the, the heat that it requires to sprout the corms. Um, so we're not gonna do them online at this time. What we do do at the nursery is we buy the, the heart to heart caladiums, what we call retail ready. So the folks at Classic Caladiums sprout them, grow them, put them on pallets and ship them to us. And we literally take them off a pallet and put it on the retail benches and sell them right away. The, the give on that is that we have, we just tell them we want an equal mix of sun caladiums and shade caladiums. And we have no idea what varieties we're going to get or what numbers. Right. 
So they will be available at the garden center soon. Soon, yeah. I, I thought they would have already been here, but yeah, our first yeah. shipment should be coming. Yes. It should be coming soon. We get, I think, three shipments like every two weeks. We get in a fresh shipment because they just sell so fast. So if you're coming here, just know that they're going to be coming soon. Yep. Yep. Um, and then Major Kitty says, um, congratulations, Jenny, on reaching 100,000 subscribers. Not sure what Jerry meant by two fingers to the camera. Is that two minutes to your coffee break? Take care. Hugs and hugs. So we did a video and we were doing the wedding, the wedding plants. And Jerry walked by the camera and he went like this. <laughs> it tore some of y'all up. <laughs> some of y'all were like, what does that mean? What does he mean? What is he doing? What do those two fingers mean? And I was like, I don't know. He's being silly. Yeah. Like, uh, hey, folks, peace. <laughs> that was just funny because there was like multiple comments on that one. I do like, though, the two minutes to the coffee break. Now, that's speaking yeah. our love language. <laughs> <laughs> coffee. Coffee. Uh, coffee on the set. I'm going to wish. <laughs> we can only wish. Well, we do have it up in the annex, Where so that? we have uh, a nice little uh, kitchenette for up at the annex, and there is a coffee machine up there, and everybody takes full advantage of that one. I just thought that was too cute. Um, okay, Lacey says, um, hi, Jenny. Can we even plant super tunias in the ground this early out here in western Oregon? I haven't seen any out in the garden centers yet. We're in 8B here, though, still rather cold and wet during the day. So that's where, you know, being a student of your own garden is um, really important. Super tunias can go down to how cool outside? They can take some 20s, but, you know, not some sort not of really long sustained cold, right. you know. Because um, that's one of the things that we're considering as far as a grower goes is moving out super bells and certain super tunias. Like a, Super Junior Bordeaux would not be one that I would put outside in the cold. It, it, it likes it a little warmer. It likes it warmer and it... it but like bubble gum. Bubble gum is would be really good for it. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Here, we have grown Super Junior baskets outside through March, you know, with multiple frost and some frost on them. And they've been some of the most prettiest because they're nice ever. and tight. Yeah. They don't get super like long and leggy, so they have a really tight habit to them. Yes, um, but I would, I mean, so obviously we're in, yeah, I mean, but we're in North Carolina. You're in Western Oregon. Even though we're very close as far as like zone wise, you're talking about still completely different yeah. growing environments. So I guess, you know, you could order some and you could try it. I'm all about trying it in the garden and see what happens. But also, if you don't have any in your local garden center, then maybe they know that now is not the best time to put them out. Personally, here, we have had great success. Thinking. It is, though, but if you can't get them, she can't get them. Yeah. Um, but we've had, because we did snowdrift for the wedding, and we've had multiple uh, frost yeah. warnings, freeze warnings, and all this other stuff, and they don't care. They're just yeah. as happy as happy can be. Yeah. So. Um, that's just being a student of your own garden and knowing what you can and can't do, which plants you can. And really the best way to do that is just to try it and, and see how it goes. Yep. Um, Wendy says, we get this question a lot throughout all the videos. Wendy asks, um, who does the drone footage? Everything is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so it's so a team effort. Yeah, it is a team effort with everything. Um, yeah, I fly the drone. Yep. Try to capture nice footage as I can. Then Megan and Jenny both uh, take that footage and make it into what you see. What you see. So there's some editing that goes in behind that and music and all that. that there's a lot of editing. Puts it to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it really is a team effort. Sometimes, man, it's kind of tight out there with the drone. You know, it's just like you know, not that anybody's wrecked it before. Avoid the trees and different things Power we're trying lines. to get really cool shots yep. and you want yep. to be close to things and so it's yeah it's a team effort yeah absolutely so it is a team effort for sure this one was an interesting one talking about being a team effort right so this was from um barbara she says i love your videos your information is so in informative why doesn't your daughter help you plant all those lovely perennials so this was when i was in the backyard 
um, planting a bed right beside the patio that really didn't have hardly anything in there. And I was planting a bunch of the perennials that Walters had sent us, the new trials and things. And in that video, I guess during the montage, you saw Megan, who is the video editor, had come out. And so I guess Barbara was concerned about why Megan wasn't helping me. So I think as a general rule, when you're looking at videos, you need to understand, because we've gotten this comment before with other people that are in the videos, you know, like, why is that guy just standing there? Or, you know, why is Jackson doing this or doing that? What you see on the video is like, one snippet in maybe a six or eight hour day and to make a judgment on why somebody is doing one thing and not doing something else. So for example, for that day, you know, Megan is 16. So she has school. She edits all of our videos. Um, so she was taking a break from school and editing to come out. And I think even that day she had gone to the grocery store for me. So even though she wasn't out there helping me plant perennials, she absolutely is a massive help to us in various ways. So I, I guess I would just, just say, just be careful on, you know, maybe judgments that you make for that 30 seconds or 10 seconds or five seconds that you see in a, in a video and just be aware that there's a lot of stuff that happens that you don't see in the videos. And then uh, Freddie says, hi Jenny, so excited for spring. Love your container ideas. Do you still have the Kinsman planter that attaches to a regular planter, the tower? If so, would you consider planting that up again? Thank you. Well, Freddie. We're trying to. You and I are on the exact same wavelength. <laughs> and that is the goal. Yep. That has been the goal for almost the past year. So there are uh, two big, huge, gorgeous, white Michael Carr traditional containers that we put the, um, it's a Pamela Crawford, Kinsman salesman, but it's by Pamela Crawford and it's a pole and then it has um, this like planter basket on top. So it's this tiered effect. We did a couple of years ago and it was gorgeous. It's one of our most popular videos that we did. Um, so the idea is to incorporate that into the signature garden. But what I learned last time is that for it really to be successful, it really needs to be on irrigation specifically the basket part because there's so many plants in there and it can dry out. So I'm trying to convince my <laughs> lovely husband to somehow we need to figure out a way to get drip irrigation in the pot and up and in the basket. That part's not hard. It's trying to figure out how to tap into the current irrigation. So the area that it would be easy to do, it wouldn't really look good in that spot. The area that I really wanted in is going to be hard to tap into the irrigation. So my amazing, smart, industrious husband is going to put on his thinking cap and somehow find a way to make it happen for me. Yeah, I think I've found a spot, I mean, a place to do it. Yeah. Good. Okay. So hopefully that'll be coming in the very near future, Freddie, because you and me, we're going to have fun with that one. <laughs> That is all the questions that, that we are doing today because, uh, yeah, I think we've covered just about a bunch of stuff. So if you have questions about specific plants or things that we're doing or projects or whatever, you know, put them in the comments below or in any video and uh, maybe next month that we will answer those questions. It is definitely a very busy time here. It is. It is clearly raining today, which I am both excited for and kind of like uh, about because can't get any work done outside today because it's just raining but there's tons of work being done inside so of course that is always a great thing so yeah any last minute thoughts um uh, no not right now the only thing i would say is there are a couple of tickets left for the um our signature experience here at creekside and mother's day is coming up it would make an amazing mother's day present <laughs> and trip. So if you're thinking about it, go ahead and get those uh, nailed down. It is going to be a fun time for sure. But as always, we so appreciate you. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. See you.